Good evening, this is Family Life Update and I'm Javier Padilla. I'm Bianca Alito and here are this week's top news on family and life. In the Philippines, a Coalition for Life block in Congress. Such great news. Thank you know, Bianca, I have full disclosure, I work in the Philippine Congress right now. I'm not a congressman, mm -hmm. but I work for and who do you work for? Uh, we'll find out in a while. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but this Co Coalition for Life was, is really great news. Mm -hmm. I mean, the news is trickling down and it's it's really good news for me. Buhay Party List, the best, Representative Lito Atienza is proposing that the independent bloc in the lower house be known as the Coalition for Life. Atienza said members of the independent bloc have common advocacies in defense of family and life, like being anti-abortion, anti-divorce, against euthanasia, and against same-sex marriage. The independent bloc is led by Congressman Martin Romualdez. The bloc is composed of party list allies like Atienza and Avocada party list representative Jonathan De La Cruz, as well as members of the Lacas CMD that includes Aleta Suarez of Quezon Province and Philip Pichai of Surigao del Sur. Mm -hmm. Now, and I'll just explain a bit because mm -hmm. I know some insights. Okay. Stuff. So, um, so we Jen, get first hand information first, from. First hand. Uh, a, bit, a bit late. Representative Javi. No, Javier. No, just <laughs> yeah. rep staff representative. Mm -hmm. So during the first um, official meeting of Congress, they had to vote for the uh, Speaker of the House. Yes. And usually the second place becomes the minority leader of the House. So there were three oh, the contestants. Mm -hmm. Candidates. <laughs> Candidates. Mm -hmm. So that the, the winner was Speaker Bill Monte, and then the, for the minority post was uh, Zamora of San Juan mm -hmm. and Romualdez of Leyte. Now Zamora won by three votes mm -hmm. over uh, Rom Romualdez, Romualdez, but they say that uh, Zamora is not really a minority mm -hmm. because he's supportive of the president. Okay. So how can you be minority if you're supportive? So he's not part of the coalition for life? Not yet. Hopefully he gets to join. So now the, the third group is now the independent bloc. This and is the coalition. Yeah, line. and they're making more waves, I think. So it's, it's really good news. And it's a nice name. Coalition for Life. Exactly. Name. Kudos to you guys. See you at the office. On other news, Thailand opens gay marriage debate in Asia. Gay rights activists in Thailand recently received some good news. Well, their, their version of good news. Yes. Proposed legislation offering same-sex couples the same legal rights as heterosexual married couples is heading to Parliament. Presenting the draft law on same-sex unions to Thailand's Parliament is Wiratana Kalaya Siri, Democrat parliamentarian, who is also the chairman of the Legal Justice Human Rights Committee. If the bill passes, it would make Thailand the first country in Asia to legalize same-sex civil unions which may not seem unrealistic mm -hmm. considering the country's well-known tolerance towards lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender couples. It's like Thailand's the gateway to all of this into Asia. Mm -hmm. So it's the next step. That's yeah. why people will be surprised. If the Philippines is the light of Asia to the world, Thailand <laughs> brings the darkness. It's the gate. Well, according to the news, <laughs> I'm not saying that. You know. I have Thai friends. I love Thai food. <laughs> that said, there are several hurdles that stand in the way of Thailand becoming the first country in Asia to break this barrier. First, public opinion. A government survey found that nearly 60% are not in favor of gay marriage. Still, leading activists in Thailand believe that the bill could facilitate the process of moving public attitudes from opposition to acceptance. Second, most legislators in Thailand are aged over 47. Hence, with an older way of thinking. Mm -hmm. The old school. Yeah. yeah. This partially explains the staunch opposition to the law in its early stages. To get the bill passed, 251 parliamentarians need to sign on. Third, changing the law involves changing Thai civil law, which some say is close to impossible, as that would be like changing the Bible. You know, the older legislators, mm -hmm. and I mean, I guess all around the world, or even here, are more conservative because mm -hmm. they haven't been media brainwashed as much as the younger ones have. And I guess they're they 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 still live in that culture. Yeah, of, uh, families the pure culture uh, <laughs> before. So, but I mean, Thailand, wake up! I mean, stop bringing this into our region. Keep it in the West. Moving to our next news story: Japan eyes robots to support aging population. It's like a, an X Men movie. <laughs> the Japanese government is giving out. 25.3 million U.S. dollars in subsidies 
to encourage more companies and universities to develop robots to care for the elder, elderly population. That's kind of sad. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, families should take care of yes. others, so not robots. Yeah, they have no feelings. It wants them to focus on catering to the country's more urgent needs rather than developing futuristic robots. Japanese researchers are racing against time to build robots smart enough to serve the needs of the elderly. In a country in which 40% of the population will be over 65 by 2055. Currently, Japan is home to the world's fastest aging population, with 24% or 30 million people already over the age of 65. As Japan's population grows older and its labor force shrinks, researchers say new types of robots will play a major role, as there simply won't be enough people to do everyday jobs. Such a surreal new story. Yeah. It's like it's like in a, in a sci -fi futuristic movie. Yeah. It's like it's Wally come mm -hmm. come to life. There was also the shocking report by a health ministry study group that 15% of those over 65, or a total of 4.6 million people have dementia. The problem has prompted more Japanese companies to come up with safety and security related products for the elderly. If promising new technologies continue to develop, Japan may consider exporting them to other countries facing a similar aging population. And that's practically the whole world because mm -hmm. they have all the population control measures. And, and that's, that's like the future being within reach. Yeah. So you, you see this, the kind of spin, like it's cool to have your own robot mm -hmm. and stuff like mm -hmm. that. But if you watch I Am Robot, you can see what, what happened to Will Smith. Right? It's come, becoming a reality. On the lighter side, we bring you our featured topic this week. Let's hear it from Marcel Badilia. Good evening, friends. Hi, I'm Marcel Badilia. And tonight, we bring you parents a very interesting topic. And it's a crash course on Yaya 101. Finding and choosing a responsible yaya is a very difficult task, especially to working parents like me and possibly you. Finding a reliable and responsible yaya is extremely difficult, especially in places like Manila. I recommend to you three possible ways by which you can find and choose a responsible and reliable yaya. First, is you could possibly consider your extended family or your distant family members. You may have um, relatives in the provinces who would f want to go to Manila and find a job. Then possibly you could recommend that they be employed by you instead. Doing so, an advantage of um, relatives being part of your extended family is the fact that you, you are sure that you can trust this person and that you are giving your children to someone uh, who would be uh, care who would care for your children as much as you would especially because they are uh, part of the family as well second way by which you can uh, find and choose a reliable yaya is to ask for referrals from friends and relatives your friends and relatives may have long time loyal nannies and yayas or kasambahays who are with them and so it would be possible to ask them if they have friends or relatives who would be uh, interested to come to Manila to be your house helps. This way, you at least know the background of the person who would be, whom you would be opening your home to. Last way by which you can also choose a yaya is to sign up with an agency. An agency has its pros and its cons. Some people say that um, agencies are very expensive. Yes, they may charge a placement fee, and yes, they do charge an ex a placement fee, but it's sometimes because of the costs involved in getting reliable yayas. Like, if you have an agency, they would be the ones to get the NBI clearance, the medical uh, clearance as x-ray, and you can also ask your, um, your agency to uh, look for a police clearance and a barangay clearance. That way, you are assured that your nanny has a good background um, going into your home. Okay, so what will work? Actually, I've tried the three recommendations and it all depends. First, it depends on the relationship that you will have with your yaya. It also depends on the person seeking for a, for, for a job, mainly because they also have their own expectations on the, the pay, on what to expect in the home, 
maybe they're not used to staying at home without anyone, any companion, or sometimes the work is just too much or too little. So the important thing here is you interview. And in the interview, you are able to ask the right questions so you can screen the person properly if you think there would be a suitable fit between your yaya and the children that she would be taking care of. And in the same manner, you also look for character references like who does this who was the referred who referred this yaya to you? Okay, in that sense, you can also ask that person what kind of character the the, the prospective yaya has. And don't be scared to also do a background check. Okay, you can ask for a bio data where the previous employers would be written. And you may also want to check from these previous employers what their experience with the yaya is. But the best uh, judge of them all, I think, personally, it's really trusting your instincts. Thinking that you know best what your children need and you're trying to find a suitable fit between your yaya and your children. So trust your instincts because at the end of the day, you love your children and you just want the best for them. Remember, our children are God's blessings and they deserve definitely not, nothing but the best. This is Marisa Padilla. Thank you for watching and I turn you over back to Javi and Bianca. Thank you, Sel. I well, mean, yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, 101. How many have you had since you started? Well, uh, fortunately, we, we've only had one. Really? No, no we had uh, maybe one, one or two, but we had we have one now, and she's been with us for almost five You're years. You're very lucky. Mm -hmm. We've had a lot. Some stayed just one day, mm -hmm. maybe another like, or, or a, a few, few hours, hours yeah, yeah. and then they suddenly disappear. Um, it's really hard to find good household help that yeah, really will care for your children the way mm -hmm. you can care and for And finding, finding the right guy is like finding the right Partner man, in life. Okay, right? Partner in life. <laughs> you know, it's, it's really hard. And Jing, I'd like to thank you for uh, everything that you're... for taking care of Camila and Miro. Oh, that's so sweet. Uh, thank so you, Jocelyn and Julia, too. For <laughs> taking care of our kids. So that's it this week. Read more about these stories at familylifeupdate.com. We're on Facebook as well. Just search for Family and Life Update. On Twitter, it's at Official family. Thanks for watching us. Share the word about us. Family and Life Update. Please do not forget to subscribe to our Flick Media channel here on YouTube. Family and Life Update. Presenting news for today's family, making a stand in today's life issues. And for our quote this week from Chinese philosopher Confucius, the strength of a nation derives from the integrity of the home. Good night, God bless you, and your families.